right now at five sunny skies for Earth Day. We'll tell you how Western Montana celebrated, plus a final push to fund state infrastructure and changes in your forecast. Matt Gray will tell you when the rain will hit. Right now, this is NBC Montana News, getting the facts right. Just six days left until the legislative session wraps up. But the question now begs, will one of the session's biggest priorities make it through? Good evening, I'm Montana McLaughlin. We'll have the latest on the state infrastructure bill in a moment. But first, beautiful sunshine around western Montana today. It may not last much longer. Let's get to meteorologist Matt Gray tracking changes in your forecast. Matt. Yeah, and in some places it's already over as showers have now begun to work their way into uh, western Montana near the Idaho state line. You can see some of those showers there. Sanders, Mineral, uh, and Mineral Counties and moving towards the Missoula area. This line of showers out about 60 miles away from the Garden City, but it is already raining in parts of Montana to the northwest. And we'll see that line of showers over the next hour, moving at about 35 miles an hour, so it'll reach the Plains area, St. Regis, Thompson Falls, Trout Creek as well. You're about to see a sprinkle or two from that, and then the hour beyond that, we'll have a chance to see that in the Mission Valley and the Missoula area, a few drops excuse me, a few uh, drops of rain. Warm temperatures out there right now, much more like it should be this time of year. 64, one of the warm spots in Missoula. It will not be as warm tomorrow, and we'll go over that and much more after this. Well, happening now, one person is dead after a crash on I-90 outside of Bozeman. It happened near Three Forks, right at the intersection of I-90 and Highway 287, just before noon today. This is a photo one of our crew members snapped of the scene. Montana Highway Patrol says the vehicle collided with the center divider. Traffic was temporarily rerouted onto the exit and it reopened around 3 p.m. Troopers are still investigating what happened and the identity of the driver. Well, back to our top story tonight. We told you yesterday how Montana lawmakers are pushing for a bill that could fix the state's infrastructure. Today, we're learning that bill could be passed as soon as Monday. The bill would fund repairs on highways, bridges, and universities, something that's sorely needed. So what's the holdup? Some lawmakers say they don't want to spend money on structures in this current economy, but others say the bill could help infrastructure in rural communities in need of repairs. The legislators already authored over $1 billion in infrastructure spending this year. Also in Helena, the $10.3 billion state budget is now headed to Governor Steve Bullock's desk for signing. It passed in a vote 58 to 41. The state's spending plan is 0.6% higher than the previous one, but it includes cuts across many state agencies. Some say the cuts go too deep, but no word yet on what Governor Bullock plans to do. So what else has the legislator done this session? Nearly 1,200 bills were introduced. So far, 278 have passed. We checked with LegiScan and found the same number of bills were introduced in 2015, but lawmakers passed almost double. The most watch measure this year is the one that would have allowed counties to run an all vote by mail election for the upcoming special congressional race for U.S. House. Well, we're following up on our promise to bring you the latest names in local city elections. Today in Missoula, we learned Heather Harp is running for city council in Ward 3, Emily Bentley's current seat, and Julie Merritt will run in Ward 6, which is currently occupied by Marilyn Marler. Still just two candidates running for mayor, though, incumbent John Angan wants voters to put him in City Hall for a fourth term, and Lisa Tripke, a former member of the Target Range School District Board of Trustees. Well, you can follow along with us as we monitor the last days of this legislative session and local elections as well. Find our special section on NBCMontana.com. Well, our severe weather alert team is calling it a rare day of sunshine today. It's fitting for a beautiful Earth Day. Events took place all over Missoula to celebrate the 47th annual anniversary of the holiday. NBC Montana's Karen Faringer went to Karis Park to see how one group of people are celebrating. Karen. Montana, it couldn't have been a better afternoon to celebrate Earth Day. The sun was shining and people from all over Montana came to participate in the annual Clark Fork River cleanup. Last year, nearly 700 volunteers cleaned up 4,000 pounds of trash and more than 650 pounds of recyclables from the stretch of river. This year, officials say they expect even more trash to be collected. One volunteer we talked to came all the way from Whitefish to help clean the river. 
We have to have protections. We need to keep things clean. We need to keep the air clean. Uh, we really need to protect our Earth. Cleaning up officials say they found everything from an iPod to a pink mini fridge and weapons they had to turn into the police. Reporting live in Missoula, Karen Farringer, NBC Montana. Well, we wanted to know more about Earth Day. Get this, the holiday was founded by Senator Gaylord Nelson on this day in 1970. And that first year, more than 20 million people participated. The holiday is now recognized in more than 180 countries around the world. Well, the Roaring Lion Fire in the Bitterroot Valley was a springboard for more controversy in the ongoing debate on forest management practices. Corvallis High School's Future Farmers of America explored the agricultural issue in a role-playing presentation. FFA members debated two sides, whether humans should have an active role in managing the forest or whether it should be left alone to manage itself. The students present the viewpoints of environmentalists, a recreationalists, a timber manager, and homeowners. We aim to create a presentation that is very balanced. We do not want um, to come away with one side or the other as having all the answers. Instead, we want our judges and the general public to make up their own mind based on the solid scientific facts that we present in our presentation. The students will take their presentation to the state competition next month. Well, today, some of the best Native American dancers and drum groups made their way to the University of Montana for the 49th annual Kiayo celebration. The Kiayo Native American Student Association raised more than $10,000 just to host this event. Event organizers expect more than 4,000 people to attend this weekend. Now, the event is one of the oldest student-run powwows in the whole country. It lets Native American communities share their culture with all of Montana. The importance of this powwow is for all of us to come together and meet again because we never know who's, uh, who the new dancers are or if some of the old dancers aren't going to be around anymore. Anyway, the uh, tradition, it's, uh, it's like a big family, and so it's, it's always good to see each other, and that's why we're here. Well, if you missed today's powwow but still want to check it out, there is another one tonight at 7 p.m. in the Adams Center. Well, at Glacier Park International Airport today, first responders and airport officials simulated a plane crash. Our Christopher Salas was there this morning and found out how first responders are trained in the case of an unlikely disaster. If you drove by Glacier Park International Airport Saturday morning, you might think something catastrophic took place. Uh, yes, there's nothing to worry about. This was just a drill today. Airport Director Robert Rakowski is overseeing an airport emergency simulation drill. It simulates a plane crash and how first responders should react. Uh, we had uh, approximately 27 agencies represented today at our drill. Uh, we had 48 victim volunteers who actually played the victims uh, as part of the incident. Those victims, also known as passengers, are volunteer first responders. And they say acting out a role like this gives them a unique perspective they normally don't have. I think it's good to get it from a patient's perspective of what they're going through. For Gilbert, she was going through a head and shoulder injury along with left flank pain. But each passenger has a different affliction that has to be handled uniquely. What's happening behind me right now is each of these passengers are being placed into designated groups and given one of these tags based on medical requirement. A grisly scene. This training takes place once every three years. And despite the unlikely nature of this event, Rakowski says the training is necessary when carrying precious cargo. It really is a community effort to put the, the safety of the traveling public uh, at the very forefront. It's important that the 27 agencies around Flathead County we call on in emergency are prepared for anything. Reporting from Glacier Park International Airport, Christopher Salas, NBC Montana. Wow, that's pretty incredible. Well, also going on tonight in Kalispell, law enforcement up there say they've arrested seven people for solicitation of prostitution. Sheriff Chuck Curry says law enforcement conducted a sex trafficking operation after several local agencies recognized an increase of sex trafficking in the Flathead area. All seven people were cited. Curry added that law enforcement wants to take a proactive approach to what he calls a growing problem. Also new tonight, we're learning the Las Vegas man who shot and killed a Montana man is now undergoing a competency exam. 
A judge will now decide if 55-year-old Rolando Cardenas is competent enough to face criminal charges for killing 57-year-old Gary Breitling of Sydney, Montana. Montana. Cardenas faces eight felony counts, including murder, attempted murder, for allegedly shooting and killing Breitling and injuring one other on a double-decker tour bus on the Las Vegas Strip. Police say mental issues may have prompted Cardenas to open fire at the end of March. Well, now let's take a live look here over Butte. Bluebird skies today. Oh, clouds are moving in, though. Just as meteorologist Matt Gray was saying, he is tracking some changes in your forecast. We'll be right back. Kepper, this is Chinook 47, Montana East Air, requesting permission to land. Over. Roger, CN 47, bring her on in. They're gone. They're gone. Yeah. Oh, here we go. yeah. <laughs> I love this. Chevy Cruze and Malibu are making quite an impression. Wi Fi in a car. I like that it has a camera. I can see where I'm backing up. It's no wonder that Chevrolet is the most awarded and fastest growing retail brand in 2016. I think I'll be trading in my car now. Current qualified competitive lessees can get this Chevy Cruze for around $139 a month. See your Montana Chevy dealers. I'm Greg Gianforte, and I approve this message. We've already heard of Rob Quist's trail of unpaid debt, the 15 grand of unpaid property taxes, the small businessman he cheated out of thousands. But why did Quist skip out on his bills? He says he was too sick to work. Not true, says the Billings Gazette. Quist was working and getting paid all along. Rob Quist doesn't pay his bills, doesn't tell the truth, doesn't have Montana values. This segment of the news is brought to you by your local Dodge Ram dealer. Well, if you saw hundreds of people marching through the streets of Missoula today, it was for a protest called the March on Science. Several hundreds, almost thousands of people met at Karis Park today with signs and posters. Speakers spoke strong words to convey a global message about scientific freedom without political interference. And Missoula wasn't the only place this was happening in today. The March on Science is a nationwide Earth Day protest with an estimated 610 rallies around the world. Today in Washington, D.C., Bill Nye, the science guy, spoke about the need for scientific funding. Organizers say they're concerned about the president's proposed budget cuts to health and science and his appointment of cabinet officials who appear to question scientific theories. Donald Trump released a statement that read, rigorous science depends not on ideology, but on a spirit of honest inquiry and robust debate. Science makes it possible that we don't leave anyone behind when we build the cleaner, fairer future for all. Also today, Vice President Mike Pence and Australia's Prime Minister joined forces on tackling the issue of North Korea. It's Pence's latest stop on a 10-day tour through Asia. Today, both leaders urged China to pressure the regime to drop its nuclear weapons program. Pence added the area of strategic patience is over and that all options are now on the table. At this time, over 1,200 U.S. Marines are in the process of training with Australian troops. Continuing on the path the world has been on with North Korea over the last 25 years is just unacceptable. It's a big day for Samsung. Today marks the release for the Galaxy S8, Samsung's first major smartphone since the massive recall on its Fire Pro Note 7. The device is available in two sizes, the standard S8 and the S8 Plus, and comes in five colors. There's no increase in battery capacity, but Samsung says the batteries have undergone a rigorous eight-point safety check. And now, Matt Gray with your forecast. Well, we got a really nice taste of spring today, but now you're saying there might be some changes, Matt? Uh, yeah, just, just a little bit. So we have this little break from the rain. Well, we're going right back into that already. You can see the radar there. Rain mm -hmm. getting uh, over the Idaho straight line now and moving towards us. We're going to see a lot more showers as we head into the second half of your weekend. So there is that rain starting to move across the state line there. Uh, let's head to the north first in the Libby area within the next hour. A chance 
for a little bit of rain along with Troy and parts of uh, the Yak River area. But most of that activity uh, is, or most of these showers here over in the uh, Idaho Panhandle, Washington will be headed to the north and away from us. Eureka, you are likely to get there in a couple of hours. Also some showers around Mineral County and showers approaching the Missoula area. And that is where we start tonight. A lot more clouds here than it was even just a couple of hours ago uh, on our weather cams in the region. So a chance for a little bit of a drizzle or uh, some sprinkles as we head towards 7 o'clock. Calmer conditions later on tonight, but after midnight, things are going to get cranking again. 64 today. Uh, Pretty nice considering the cool weather we've been seeing recently. Around Bozeman, 61 degrees right now, 50s by 7 o'clock, and dry skies, 40s uh, as we head into the later hours uh, of tonight. Around Butte, clouds beginning to roll in here, but staying dry through this evening. 50s at 7, 40s as we head towards 9, 58 right now. And in Kalispell, 60s currently. We'll get down uh, into the uh, lower 50s as we head towards 9 o'clock. A chance for a sprinkle or two here, but for the most part, staying on the drier side of things in the Flathead Valley. So let's roll this on Future Tracker. Main portion of this storm a little ways away, but as we head towards midnight, some showers moving into northwest Montana. More showers going to be approaching the Missoula and Bitterroot areas uh, as we head uh, later on into the evening. And then some uh, kind of wet conditions to what we're going to be waking up to around Missoula to the Helena and Butte areas. Snow up in the higher elevations, such as around Lost Trail Pass. Then we headed to the afternoon. Showers kind of shift towards southwest Montana. Just a few sprinkles for Kalispell. Light showers for Missoula, but a chance for a thunderstorm or two around the Butte and Bozeman area as we head into Sunday evening. Not terribly concerned about the severity of these storms. We could see some heavy rain, the possibility for lightning also an issue. So any outdoor activities you have uh, when thunder roars, you got to head back indoors. Wind gusts I don't think are going to be too bad. We're talking only about 30 mile an hour uh, gusts around the region. Light snow is possible in some of our areas Sunday morning. So Lost Trail Pass, Georgetown Lake, Lolo Pass, Chief Joseph Pass area. So it could be a little slippery at times. Slushy conditions uh, up in those high elevation areas and wet roads. More wet weather, including winter like weather on Monday morning. Light snow will be falling above 4,000 feet with accumulations uh, an inch or less for most areas across southwest Montana. Slushy pass conditions on those highly traveled corridors. So that's something to keep an eye on. To the lows for tonight. Meanwhile, will be mild as we see those clouds move over. 39 in Kalispell, 40s for Polson, 41 in Missoula, Butte down to about 36 tonight, 38 in Dillon, 40 in Salmon, and 38 in Bozeman. For tomorrow, a little cooler, 58 in the Bozeman area, still on the warm side there though, 50 around Butte, only 55 for Missoula and Hamilton, 55 as well for Kalispell, West Glacier, uh, gets down to around 52. Your seven day forecast is a wet one Monday through Friday for Butte and Bozeman. We'll see showers, mixtures of rain and snow at many times and some time and uh, play times like Wednesday and Thursday. We may struggle to get out of the 40s. Butte, you're going to be in the 40s for most of the week with a break in the showers on Saturday. No such break looks like it's coming for Missoula and Kalispell. Showery conditions every day. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday look to be particularly wet. Thursday, Friday, maybe a little bit better, maybe a little sun peeking through, but it really looks like it's going to be quite a wet week. Yeah, those seven day forecasts look like we're more in the middle of winter than we are in the middle of spring. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. It does feel a little bit that way, but we're just bit. running a little below average. All right. So. Well, thanks, Matt. Well, hopefully those showers aren't impacting sports going on this weekend too much, Tyler. Not at all. Spring football wrapping up all across the country. The Cats and the Grizz playing their annual spring games today. We were in Bozeman and yes, we were also in Butte today. Don't miss those highlights and more after the break. Okay, let's call this agent. I'm coming over right now. The newly advanced GLE can see in your blind spot. Onboard cameras and radar can detect danger all around you. Driver assist systems can pull you back into your lane if drifting. Bye, Chief. Bye, Bobby. And will even help you brake if necessary. It makes driving less of a production. Lease the GLE 350 formatic for $5.99 a month at your local Mercedes-Benz dealer. Mercedes-Benz, the best or nothing. There it is. How about now? Is it working yet? Nope. Are you on channel three? Why do you keep asking Stop me? Stop asking me why I keep asking mommy things. Wait, what remote is that? The one you handed me. No, use the gray remote, Diane. There are three of them. Pick them all up and press the number three. Why isn't there an easier way to get all my favorite shows? I hear you. And we have something for this. Thank you. Fine, you know what? We're reading books. Stop switching inputs. Switch to Dish and get Netflix, YouTube, and more at the push of a button. Dish, tuned in to you. 
like a pro with a beautiful DCS range or cooktop from Fred's Appliance. DCS appliances are the choice of the pros on one of the most popular cooking shows on TV. Get a free DCS dishwasher with the purchase of select DCS appliances only at Fred's Appliance. Stop by Fred's Appliance and see the full line of contemporary and stylish DCS appliances. See all the top brands at Fred's. Fred's Appliance. We sell appliances. Only appliances. Previously on the Stanley Cup playoffs. Ryder gets it across the front, scores! Mika Zibanejad gets the winner, and the Rangers take the lead in this series. The Stanley Cup playoffs continue tonight on NBC. Imagine going to work every day with your mom. Hey, pumpkin. Is your work email password the same as your regular email password? It is, but don't say so it out loud. Team Edward, all lowercase. Oh, my God. Great news premieres Tuesday after The Voice on NBC. This segment of the news is brought to you by your local steel dealer. And now, sports with Tyler Bergen. Welcome back. A big day of college football throughout the Treasure State today. Yes, I know the calendar only says April, but the Montana Grizzlies made the trip to Butte this afternoon for the team's annual spring game. A gorgeous day in the mining city as fans showed up to see the maroon team take on the white team. The first half was all about defense. After already throwing a pick on his first drive in the game, here's Reese Phillips living dangerously again. It's picked off by Josh Sandry and the Big Fork native takes it 33 yards to the house. White team up six to nothing. Later in the quarter, Caleb Hill in a quarterback for the White Scott. He throws a nice little back shoulder pass to McKenna Simmies and the former Grizz quarterback takes that in for a 17 yard score. White team up 14. Second quarter now more good things from Hill at quarterback. His play action pass is a strike down the field into the hands of Samari Torrey. 37 yards on the touchdown gets the White out to a big 21 nothing advantage. Back to Phillips on offense now throwing out to his left but it's trouble again in the form of Josh Sandry. Yes the flathead Valley product returns at 54 yards for another touchdown. Sandry had three interceptions on the day, and the white team dominated this scrimmage. Final score 34 to 7. Another big sky football team would strap on the pads this afternoon, the Montana State Bobcats. They stayed home in front of their fans in Bozeman for the annual Sunny Holland Spring Classic. The MSU offense in blue going up against the defense in white at Bobcat Stadium. The offense got it going in the first drive of the game. Third down in the red zone, Chris Murray fires a strike over the middle to Kevin Cassis, who stretches over the goal line through a tackle for the touchdown. And Blue is on the board early. Now in the second quarter of action, Tyler Brugman in at quarterback. He throws over the middle, and Cam Sutton comes down with it in the end zone for another touchdown. The second for the offense in the first half, and the Blue team led 26-11 to at halftime. But the Bobcat defense started making some plays in the second half. Bryce Alley breaks up Camden Brown's pass, and Baloo Chapman plucks it out of the air for the pick. And the Bozeman native has his sights set for the end zone, and Chapman take this one all the way to the house for the pick six. That touchdown brings the white team's deficit back down to eight, 29 to 21. Offense now trying to answer back. Murray rolls to his right, fires a dart to the corner where Cassis comes down with it, his second receiving touchdown of the day, and the blue team goes on to win 38 to 26. Now the Cats and the Grizz still have a quite a bit of time until they renew their rivalry on the gridiron, but it was a different story today in Missoula. The latest edition of the Cat Grizz Duel return to Dorn Blazer Field on a picture perfect day. First up for you, we have a couple 4x100 meter races, starting with the women. This race decided by nearly half a second earlier this month at the Al Manuel Classic, but today a dropped baton by the Grizzlies would allow Darian Box and the rest of the Cats to cruise to victory with a time of 47.34. In the men's race, the Grizzlies using one of the best foursomes in the conference to blaze past the Cats. Dominique Bobo, the anchor, will cross the finish line over a second before the Cats. Montana wins it with a time of 41.19. In the men's 110 meter hurdles, a mano -e mano race here between Callum McNabb of Montana and MSU's Christopher Lang. A close one all the way, but a cleaner run by Lang does the job, edging out McNabb by .09 seconds, finishing 15.35. And finally, in the men's long jump, it came down to Alexander Lewis of MSU and Dominique Bobo of Montana. Here's Bobo's best jump of the day, leaping for an impressive 23.4 feet. That would be good enough for first place. And that'll do it for your sports. We'll be right back. This segment of the news is brought to you by Fred's Appliance.
Which liberal politicians support a gun registry? Nancy Pelosi and Rob Quist, who supports government-run health care. With higher taxes and more spending, Quist and Pelosi again. Government regulations that threatened coal jobs? Yep, Quist and Pelosi supported those too. On issue after issue, politician Rob Quist shares Nancy Pelosi's liberal San Francisco values. That makes liberal politician Rob Quist wrong for Montana. The NRCC is responsible for the content of this advertising. Spring has finally sprung. Hurry up, let's go. Time to get busy. Get doing. Dad, can I use this one? Time for a new RAV4. The 2017 RAV4, the right choice for any adventure. Now with Toyota Safety Sense. Get yours today with these limited time savings. Dad, I think I got one. The Toyota <laughs> Spring Event is going on now. For details, see your nearest Montana Toyota dealer. Toyota, let's go places. For generations, this old rifle has protected my family's ranch. In Congress, I'll protect your right to bear arms because it's my right too. I won't stand by while a millionaire from New Jersey tries to attack my Montana values. I'm Rob Quist, and I approve this message to defend your rights. But I'm sending this one to defend mine. It's Ranger's Brother RV Center's Spring into Summer Sales Event. Escape into the freedom of the open road and the great outdoors in a Jayco Class A motorhome like the Elante with luxurious travel and comfortable pricing starting at only $79,995. Elante features J-Ride, guaranteeing the smoothest ride on the road today. Or spring into savings on our huge selection of new Class C motorhomes with payments as low as $400 a month OAC. Gear up and hit the road in style with a new motorhome from Jayco. Only where a handshake means something, Ranger's Brother's RV Center. Well, if you're a Jimmy Fallon fan, this next story is for you. Residents of Fallon, Nevada launched a social media campaign to try and get tonight's show host Jimmy Fallon to visit their city. It's called the hashtag Fallon wants Fallon campaign. <laughs> Young and old alike are all getting involved. Take a look at their excitement. Residents say the reason for all of this is because when they Google their city, all their local news stories are trumped with news about the famous comedian. The city's mayor even said he would give Jimmy Fallon a key to the city if he visited. So far, Fallon has yet to acknowledge the city of Fallon's invitation to visit Northern Nevada. There's three things I like in life. One, my mom, two, Taco Bell, and three, Jimmy Fallon. So I think he really needs to come. Oh, what do you think? <laughs> That's perfect. I think it should. I think well he should said. go. That's a lot of Jimmy Fallon hits. Hey, let's uh, take a final look here uh, at 